music business has been a disaster over the past decade, but one artist has been able to amass a fortune worth up to $500 million, and it's not from iTunes downloads. The singer, of course, is Sean Corey Carter, also known as Jay-Z, and an empire state of mind, how Jay-Z went from street corner to corner office, just out from portfolio. Forbes writer Zach O'Malley Greenberg describes how he evolved from a small-time street hustler into a mogul. Zach, welcome to our Bling Free Studios here in Midtown. Well, thanks so much for having me on. So in 2010, you write that Jay-Z earned $63 million, more than all but seven CEOs. Where does his income come from? Well, last year it came primarily from touring. Um, you know, touring is that one part of the music business that's still rocking pretty hard, at least for the top acts. Um, you know, Jay-Z grosses uh, over a million dollars a show. Uh, he takes home about a third of that. Um, so on the touring front, it's kind of how much time does he want to spend? How much money does he want to make? Your book, again, is really, it's a business story, not a music story. And there are a lot of talented rappers out there. Um, not all of them do well in business over the long term. What were some of his successes early on in terms of getting into the business of music? Well, I think the, the first thing that Jay-Z did was he started uh, an independent company, um, Rockefeller Records, to distribute his first album, or rather, to, uh, to launch his first album, and they, they brought in another distributor. Um, you know, and sort of that uh, arrangement, the financial arrangement, um, resulted in him getting a lot more money than he would have otherwise. You write that he has a unique ability to set trends and profit from them almost to an astronomical level. Um, the first one that he branched out to for music was apparel. That's right. Uh, in 1999, he and uh, business partner Damon Dash founded Rockaware. Um, and the reason that they did it was because Jay-Z had been rapping about another brand called Iceberg. Um, and as soon as he did that, sales skyrocketed. Um, so being a shrewd businessman, uh, he and his partner, Damon Dash, went to Iceberg and said, hey, you know, can we get an endorsement deal here? We're, we're doing wonders for your brand. Um, and the executive said, uh, no thanks. So um, Jay-Z said, well, you know, if I'm not going to profit from it, I don't want to be involved. I'm going to start my own. And so 12 years later, this is still an independent, profitable company that he owns? Well, actually, he sold the rights to it um, back in 2008 for uh, $204 million. And obviously, didn't keep all of that. Um, there were other partners involved. There were taxes. Um, but he sh certainly got uh, a very, very hefty payday. Okay. So what else? He's got sneakers with Reebok? That's right. Uh, here's the S. Dot Carter sneakers with Reebok. He's got a 40-40 uh, club, uh, nightclub chain. He's got an interest in uh, the Spotted Pig, a gastro pub in New York. He's got a stake in the New Jersey Nets. And that's one thing I wanted to ask you about, because getting ownership of a sports franchise is very difficult for anybody to do. As I understand, he sort of got dealt in uh, on ownership of the New Jersey Nets for not all that much of a financial contribution. How did that come about? Well, that's right. He got a, he got a big discount um, to associate himself with the Nets, and I think... You know, he knew going into it um, kind of what he brought to the brand of the Nets, and he knew that the Nets had always been kind of the second-tier team um, in New York, and so he kind of worked his way into getting a, a nice discount of on his stake. part of this, and the Nets are trying to build a new complex in Brooklyn, which is where he was from. That's right. Jay-Z's a famous Brooklyn native son, and, um, you know, I think that uh, the owners anticipated a lot of opposition in terms of building the stadium, um, some of the legal hurdles, and having somebody on board like Jay-Z, um, you know, has really helped them, I think, from a PR standpoint. And so what percentage stake does he have, and how much is that worth? Well, it depends who you ask, but in my research, uh, the stake that he has is between 1% and 2%. Um, it's worth uh, between 4 and $6 million, um, but the big kicker here is that he didn't pay full freight for it. Um, like many celebrities who get involved in sports teams, there was sort of a sweetheart discount to get his name involved. Now, this book is overwhelmingly a story of success, but there have been plenty of failures along the way. He's had some misadventures uh, with car companies. What are some of the notable failures he's had as a business person? Well, that's right. Uh, you mentioned the, the car company. Uh, there was a Jay-Z Jeep that was slated to uh, go into production in the mid-2000s, um, but the deal fell apart at the last minute, not necessarily through any fault of Jay-Z's own. It was a, more of a restructuring um, kind of thing going on at Chrysler, and some management changes and somebody decided to uh, to kill the project. Um, but Jay-Z, uh, you know, made a very uh, uh, strong effort to not showcase the fact that this had happened. Um, and I think in many ways it was to burnish his uh, victorious image, you know. So you think, you know, he's 41 or 42 now, you think he will be touring and rapping into his 50s and 60s? Uh, maybe not so actively, maybe not like the Stones or something, but, um, you know, I, th I think he's the sort of person who, you know, once uh, uh, he and Beyonce start a family, I think he'll probably fade back a little bit um, deliberately. Um, but, you know, I think if you wanted to tour all the time, like the Stones do, uh, I think you could most certainly do something like that. Now, one of the telling anecdotes in your book is toward the beginning when you're talking about, you know, how he and his team 
really didn't give me much, if any, cooperation at all. And it wasn't simply for image reasons. There seemed to be a business reason for it. Sure. Um, well, when I first got the book deal, I went straight to his manager. Um, well, Jay-Z calls him his consigliere because nobody manages Jay-Z. Uh, and um, you know, I, I told him the, the deal. I said, I have this book deal from Penguin Portfolio, and um, it's going to be a business book about Jay-Z. We're going to put him up on this pantheon with Warren Buffett and Steve mm -hmm. Jobs. Um, you know, and I'd like to be a fly on the wall in some meetings and observe and interview him. And I thought it was a slam dunk, but what he said was, What's in it for us? And uh, at the at the time, I was puzzled, but you know, in hindsight, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, this is how Jay Z operates. If he's not getting a cut of something, he's not going to be involved um, because he can he can do that. All right. So, in addition to your agent and the publisher, the subject wants a piece of the action of the book. It's it's difficult out there for for authors. Right. <laughs> and you know, and from a journalistic perspective, you know, if you're paying uh, a key source in your book, you know, uh, it kind of undermines your integrity a little bit. Mm -hmm.